The United States is currently battling an epidemic of chronic disease, which includes conditions like cardiovascular or heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and most cancers. It is estimated that six in 10 US adults have at least one chronic condition, and four in 10 have two or more. That roughly translates to 120 million people who are affected by chronic disease on a daily basis and require ongoing medical care. It also is highly likely that every one of us is affected by chronic disease, either personally or because it affects a loved one, a family member, or friend. Chronic diseases are also the leading cause of death in the United States. And in fact, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, chronic diseases, specifically heart disease, remained the leading cause of death between March 2020 and October 2021. However, there is good news, and that is that almost 80% of chronic diseases could be prevented through diet and lifestyle change. The bad news, or at least where it gets a little tricky, is that most people remain unaware of the necessary skills to make sustainable diet changes. And this is only exacerbated by the fact that most medical and healthcare professional programs provide little practical nutrition as education. As an answer to these health education gaps, I'd like to introduce you to the field of culinary medicine. Culinary medicine is a novel and emerging healthcare field that combines the art of cooking with the science of nutrition and medicine. It integrates these disciplines in order to provide health and nutrition education through the interesting and practical teaching mediums, food and cooking. Aside from the very fundamental role that food has as nourishment for our lives, it has also played an integral role in our history and continues to affect our culture, whether it's a best-selling book, a favorite television show, or a beloved family recipe. And so that's why I believe synergistically Culinary medicine promises to transform medicine and healthcare. And it will do so by teaching people how to use food as medicine across different life stages and health states, such that disease is prevented or treated and health is supported or restored. Culinary medicine has recently gained traction in both the public and the healthcare sectors. Contributing to its success is the fact that culinary medicine is culturally competent and financially sustainable, so it can benefit anybody. It's also evidence-based, which means there's research to support it. Culinary medicine has been shown to help promote the sustainability of positive diet change, which as the articles published in 2019 show, led to decreased risk of cardiometabolic diseases like diabetes or heart disease, as well as lower overall cancer risk and breast cancer risk. And a literature review published in 2020 went even a step further and said that, chronic disease, uh, that culinary medicine helped to improve chronic disease management and led to decreased risk of chronic disease-related com complications. Culinary medicine joins a national renaissance of wellness movements. And around the country, different culinary medicine programs, resources, and electives are being developed, many of them in medical schools, even right here in Arizona, and very importantly, community-centered culinary, culinary medicine initiatives are being enacted to provide the public with that important combination of nutrition, medicine, and cooking. I first became interested in the field of culinary medicine while a student here at Arizona Western College. And I was introduced to this concept of food as medicine in my introductory science, biology, and chemistry classes. And I carried that interest with me to the University of Arizona in Yuma as an undergraduate nutrition and dietetic student. And currently as a dietetic graduate intern through the U of A and community health educator, all still in Yuma, I am very excited to be able to participate in culinary medicine initiatives that promote the local shift of the culinary arts to the nutrition and medical fields. And I think it's really important that there are culinary medicine programs here in Yuma because the principles of culinary medicine lend themselves so well to serving the diverse needs of our rural border agricultural communities. And a large part of that is due to the fact that culinary medicine doesn't isolate certain foods or diets as disease panaceas. 
Instead, it allows for foods from all sorts of different agricultural sectors and cultural backgrounds to be used to teach people about the important nutrients that are in food and how those impact health. I'm currently working with a local registered dietitian and medical providers and have designed and implemented a culinary medicine program for the Medical Mall in San Luis, which is a collection of rural health clinics that serves the communities along the US-Mexico border. And the goal of this culinary medicine program is to use food and cooking as a medium to teach people about their body's unique nutritional needs and how those change across life stages and are impacted by different health states. And in so doing, also increase the, these people, the participants, access to quality health care and improve health-related outcomes such as weight, blood pressure, blood lipids, blood sugar, etc. And I use this modular teaching cart, which you can see on the slide, to provide simultaneous nutrition and cooking education. And then the participants are able to use what I like to call the culinary, medicine, uh, culinary essentials toolbox to directly translate that taught nutrition education into actionable skills. And it's this interactive approach that allows for the participants to be able to improve their health literacy and improve their self-efficacy and promoting these health, prom uh, health promoting behaviors at home. And some of the uh, favorite recipes that we've used is a marinated bean salad, which is full of important uh, plant proteins, as well as the nutrient fiber, which has been shown to be very helpful in promoting blood sugar management as well as improving blood lipid levels. With the strawberry jicama orange salad, which has a chili lime dressing, this is a really great way to showcase the different ways that you can serve and then consume produce. With jicama, which is like a vegetable root, it's full of fiber as well. It's a good source of water if you're getting it from food, as well as folate. With the oranges, it probably has the most well-known nutrient of them all, vitamin C, so key for immunity. And then with strawberries, it also is full of vitamin C, but it's rich in folate too. And I love to use this one, especially for pregnant women, because in addition to whatever supplement their obstetric care provider is giving, it's really great to show them where they can get essential nutrients like folate in their diet. And then probably one of my favorites of all time is the caldo de pollo or the chicken soup. It's such a traditional heartwarming recipe, and we probably all have some connection to a version of this. And it's a really great way to show how there are already helpful benefits in the foods we're eating, such as the lean protein in the soup, um, the high vegetable content with the carrots, the celery, and the onion, and talk about different ways we can make healthful substitutions, such as substituting the traditional white rice for brown rice, which will help improve the protein content and improve the fiber content. And so now, I'd like to share with you mi receta for guacamole. And I use the term la receta, and I love to use this one, I'll tell it to everybody because it has two meanings in Spanish. It can mean like a recipe, one you would find in a cookbook, as well as a prescription, like one your medical provider would give you for a medication. And I think this excellently describes the dual purpose of food for good eating and good health. And so now let's get started with mi receta for guacamole. <laughs> and we have a fancy uh, table coming out, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so we're gonna start with the star of our dish, the avocados. And as you may know, avocados are full of healthy fats like polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, which are important for uh, maintaining good blood lipid levels. They're also, they contain a molecule called avocado B. And avocado B has been shown to help improve insulin sensitivity and improve glucose tolerance. And that is key, Those, both of them, the um, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats and the avocado and B are really essential for chronic disease management. So I'm just gonna mix this up. I have them kind of already pre-sliced, but I'm just gonna do it to whatever desired texture or consistency I would like. Sometimes I like it more smooth, sometimes I like it more chunky, and I think that's one of the great things about using culinary medicine is that we can, a lot of times, when we're informed of the health benefits in food, we can do it to our taste. Okay, so I think this will be good for now. I'm gonna add in my lime juice, and I love to use limes when making guacamole. There are a couple different things you could use, but I love the tang that's in the limes, and it also has antioxidant properties. So let me squeeze this in. And um, the antioxidant properties in the limes are one of the things that's gonna help prevent the avocados from turning brown too early, and at least will help lengthen the time before they do. 
And the antioxidant properties that help do that for um, this guacamole are also something that's important for our health because limes can, are a rich source of vitamin C, which is an antioxidant. And in fact, just one lime has almost a quarter of your recommended daily amount. So I like mine really limey. Honestly, for this amount, you could go with a little bit less, but I think it has a really nice flavor. Okay, the next thing, my third ingredient is the onions. And you could really use any onion, but I'm using green onions and kind of keeping with this green, green theme I have going on. And um, the great thing about the onions is that they're full of prebiotics. And this is regardless of their color. Um, and prebiotics are important nutrients that help support the growth and maintenance of healthy gut bacteria, which has been linked to something obvious like digestive health, as well as maybe something not so much uh, like psychological health. So I'm just gonna mix this in. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to my flavor side. Um, and I am gonna add a little bit of salt. Salt isn't wrong. It's just that excess consumption of salt over a prolonged amount of time is what increases risk for heart disease. So I wanna make sure not to add too much of that by making sure I have a medley of different spices and herbs to boost the flavor. And one of the things that I'm gonna be using is cilantro. And cilantro is really great because it does have a nice flavor, but it's also full of an um, antioxidants and phytonutrients. Specifically, it has lutein and uh, zeaxanthin. And those are really important for eye health. And you'll really find these in a lot of the green vegetables. So I'm just gonna mix this in. And again, a lot of these things are kind of based on the way you like it, the taste that you have, um, depending on the proportions. But this looks good to me. And then the last part that I'm gonna add in is my garlic. And I'm using dried garlic, but you could use fresh or dried or a mixture of both. And they all contain a, mo a molecule called allicin. And allicin is cardioprotective. And in fact, the um, chemical aspects of allicin uh, has been shown to help prevent atherosclerosis or the hardening of the arteries. And it also has been linked to improved heart health. And then my last thing that I'm gonna add in is my chili powder. Now you could use other peppers in here, but for the simplicity of this, I'm just gonna use the chili powder. And like most peppers, it contains a molecule called capsaicin. And capsaicin, in addition to being a nice source of heat and spice in this, is also um, good for helping to lower the uh, uh, bad inflammation or harmful inflammation in your body. So this kind of turned it a little red. So you can see though, beautiful <laughs> variety of, uh, that's in the guacamole. And I just wanted to use this to show you how quick, easy, and delicious it is to make a health-packed bowl of guacamole. So in conclusion this evening, I'd like to leave you with this acronym. Let's eat. Starting with the letter E, eat well. Eat lots of different colors of fruits and vegetables. Uh, promote whole grains, lean proteins, stay hydrated. A, actively cook and take part in the preparation of your meals. You will literally be taking your health into your own hands. And T, tell others. We can all participate in promoting the shift towards using food as medicine for individual and community health. And that is what makes culinary medicine a recipe for good health. Thank you.